In this video, I will show you how to prove that two triangles are congruent using things like side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, 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 side, or hypotenuse leg. So glancing at problem number one, uh, if I just look at one triangle at a time, I see that we have two sides and an angle. Um, so as soon as I see two sides and an angle, that narrows it down to three possibilities. It's either going to be uh, side angle side, or it could be um, hypotenuse leg, or it could be none. Uh, let me address the none real quick. Um, it's none because side side angle does not prove that two triangles are congruent. So if when I have two sides and an angle, if it turns out to be side side angle, then I'm going to say none. Um, so the difference is if it's going to be side angle side, see how the A is between the two S's. The angle has to be between the two sides. So um, here's one side that's marked. Here is another side that's marked. And this is the angle that's between the two sides, and that is the angle that is marked. So that means this is going to be side angle side. Um, now, number two is really obvious. I see three sides, and that can only be side, side, side. For problem number three, I see two angles and a side. So uh, that narrows it down to two choices. It can either be this one, because this has two angles and a side, or it can be this one. Um, the way you know the difference is by using the word between. See how the S is between the two A's? That means the side has to be between the two angles. Let's see if that's the case. Um, so here's one angle that's marked. Here's the other angle. This is the side that is between the two angles. And that is the side that's marked. So since the side is between the two angles, it will be angle, side, angle. All right. Now looking at this one, I see that we have three angles marked. Well, notice that angle, angle, angle is not one of the options. So we're going to say none because angle, angle, angle does not prove that triangles are congruent. All right, um, moving on to number five. There's something extra that we have to mark for these two triangles. Do you see how they share a side? Anytime you have uh, two triangles sharing a side, that shared side is automatically congruent for both triangles. So mark that. Now, look at one triangle at a time. Okay, look at the yellow triangle. Notice that we have two sides and an angle. So, whenever I have two sides and an angle, there are three possibilities. It's either side angle side, or hypotenuse leg, or it'll be none, all right? Those are the three possibilities. Um, it'll be none if it turns out to be side, side, angle, which does not work. Let's start with hypotenuse leg, actually. Hypotenuse leg is only for right triangles, and uh, this is a right triangle. So let's just look and see, do we have a hypotenuse and a leg marked? Well, uh, the green mark I just put, that is the hypotenuse. It's across from the 90 degrees. And a leg is just any other side. So we have a hypotenuse and a leg that makes this hypotenuse leg. All right, moving on to <clears throat> number six. There's something extra we can mark here, and it's vertical angles. All right, anytime you have um, intersecting lines that sort of form an X. Uh, the angles that are across from each other are called vertical angles, and vertical angles will always be congruent. 
All right, now that we have that marked, I see that we have two, okay, also look at one triangle at a time. So for example, look at this yellow triangle with me. All right, so looking at the yellow triangle, what do we have marked? I see that we have two angles and one side. All right, we have two angles and a side. So that narrows it down to either this or this. Uh, how do we tell the difference? Well, it'll be angle, side, angle, only if the side is between the two angles. All right, well, here's one angle on the yellow triangle, and here's the other angle that we have marked. This is the side that's between those two angles, and this is not the side that we have marked. So the side is not between the angles. So that's why we know it'll be angle, angle, side. Now, uh, looking at problem number seven, what can we mark just because uh, the way the picture looks? We can mark the shared side. Now, if you just look at one triangle at a time, for example, the yellow triangle, what do we have marked right now? Well, we have all three sides marked. That makes this side, side, side. All right, on number eight, the thing that we can mark in addition to what's already marked is a pair of vertical angles. All right, these are vertical angles automatically congruent. Now, look at one triangle at a time and tell me what types of parts do we have marked right now? Well, we have two angles and a side. Two angles and a side. That means it's either going to be angle, side, angle, or angle, angle, side. Well, it'll be angle, side, angle if the side is between the two angles. Well, here's one angle that's marked. Here's the other angle. Here's the side that's between those two angles. And look, that is the side that is marked. Since the side is between the two angles, it'll be angle, side, angle. Okay, if we wanted to use hypotenuse leg to prove that these triangles are congruent, what would we also need to know? Okay, so we need a hypotenuse and a leg. So look at one triangle at a time. Is the hypotenuse marked yet? No. Here's the hypotenuse right here. It is not yet marked. So that must be the missing piece. All right. We need a hypotenuse on this triangle, and we need the hypotenuse on this triangle. And so that is segment NM must be congruent to segment VU. All right, this time we are shooting for side, angle, side. Notice that the angle has to be between the two sides. So we already have a side and an angle on this triangle. So all we need is another side. And we'll pick this one so that the angle will be right between the two sides. So that is um, segment, uh, hold on, I accidentally covered up one of my letters. Can't do that. So we just marked side NL. All right, doing the same thing on the other triangle. Um, if I mark this side, this will give me side, angle, side. So that's VT segment VT. All right, number 11. This time we want angle, side, angle. Um, right now we already have an angle and a side. So we need another angle. Okay, so the question is, are we going to mark this angle or, th or this angle? Which one is the one that we want? 
Well, we have to pick the one so that the side is between the two angles. All right, so I need the side to be between the two angles. So that's why I'm going to pick this angle. All right, because that way I have this angle and I have this angle. This is the side that's between those two angles. And that is the side that I have marked. Doing the same thing on the other triangle, if I pick this angle, that will give me angle side angle with the side between the two angles. So that means that angle M must be congruent to angle U. All right, for number 12, we want angle, angle, side. All right, so far we have a side and an angle. Okay, so we need one more angle. Um, and again, the question is, which angle is it gonna be? Well, for angle, angle, side, we want the side to not be between the two angles. So that's why um, this time I'm going to pick this angle because that way, here's one angle, here's the other angle, this is the side between them. That makes this side not between the two angles, and that's what it takes to be angle, angle, side. All right, we need a side that is not between. Um, so let's see, that's angle N. And, um, on this one, I need to pick this angle so that the side is not between the two angles. So that's angle V. All right, mark the diagram with anything you know and then fill in the blanks. Angle A is congruent to angle E so angle A is congruent to angle E. Angle B is congruent to angle D. So angle B is congruent to angle D. Side AB is congruent to side ED. Okay. Are these triangles congruent? Um, well, we have two angles and a side. Uh, this is going to be angle, side, angle. All right, the other option was angle, angle, side. But I see that the side is between the two angles. That's why I picked angle, side, angle. Um, now, Triangle ABC is congruent to triangle what, what, what? Well, look at the markings. A is congruent to angle E. Next comes B, which is congruent to angle D. And that just leaves F. All right, angle A is congruent to angle F. Uh, segment AC is congruent to segment FD. Segment CB is congruent to segment DE. All right, what do we have? Uh, we have two sides and an angle. That means this will either be side, side, angle. whoops. This will either be side, side, angle which does not work, um, or it could be side angle side, or it could be hypotenuse leg. Well, hypotenuse leg is only for right triangles, so it's not gonna be hypotenuse leg. Um, it'll be side angle side if the angle is between the two sides. But um, this angle is not between the two sides. That would be angle C, for example. So that means it can't be this one either. Um, that means that this is side-side angle, but because that doesn't prove anything, 
we're going to circle the triangles cannot be proven congruent. And whenever you circle this, you have to leave the other blanks blank. Don't say they can't be proven congruent and then make a congruent statement. Also, do not write SSA right here because that's not a thing. All right, moving on. Okay, C is the midpoint of BE. When I have a midpoint statement, I like to highlight what we're talking about. So here's BE, C is the midpoint. Uh, that means that this side is congruent to this side. All right, so we covered the midpoint. Um, now, in addition to that, we can also mark the vertical angles to be congruent. Vertical angles are always congruent. Now, um, are these triangles congruent? I see uh, two angles and a side. That means that this is either angle, angle, side, or angle, side, angle. It'll be angle, side, angle if the side is between the two angles. Um, just looking at this triangle, I see that yes, the side is between these two angles. So I know it will be angle, side, angle. So triangle ABC is congruent to triangle, let's see, A corresponds to D. I can tell because they're both blank. B. B corresponds to E. They have the single mark. And that just leaves angle C. Okay, C is the midpoint of AD. Highlight AD. Here's segment AD. If C is the midpoint of that, that means that this side um, is congruent to this side. In addition, let's mark the vertical angles. All right, these will be congruent. Now, if you look at one triangle at a time, like look at this triangle on the left, I see that we have two angles and a side. So again, this will either be angle, angle, side, or it'll be angle, side, angle. To be angle, side, angle, the side must be between the two angles. Um, but this side is not between the two angles. That would be this side up here. So that means it will be angle, angle, side. Now, triangle ABC is congruent to triangle, let's see, um, A corresponds with D, they're both blank, B corresponds with E, single mark, and that just leaves side C, um, angle C. All right. The only thing that we can mark, they didn't give us a given, but there's a shared side. So we can go ahead and mark the shared side congruent. Um, now, just look at one triangle at a time. So for right now, I'm looking at this yellow triangle. All right, so looking at the yellow triangle, what kind of marks do we have marked? I see that we have two sides and an angle. So there are three possibilities. This will either be a side-side angle, which is not possible, all right? That would be none. Um, or it could be hypotenuse leg, um, which is a special case of side-side angle that's uh, for right triangles. Or it'll be side angle side. Um, let's Let's talk about hypotenuse leg first. Hypotenuse leg is only for right triangles. Um, so let's just look and see. Uh, this is a right triangle. That makes this a possibility. Do we have a hypotenuse and a leg? Uh, well, this green double mark, that is the hypotenuse of the triangle. See how it's across from the 90 degrees? And a leg just means any other side, and we have one of those. So that makes this hypotenuse 
leg. All right, now triangle ABC is congruent to triangle. Well, A corresponds with D. All right, they both have the 90 degrees. B, well, yellow angle B corresponds with white angle B. You can tell because they both are, are right next to the single mark. And um, yellow angle C corresponds to white angle C. All right, how about number 18? Again, let's go ahead and mark the shared side. And again, look at one triangle at a time. So right now, focus on the yellow triangle with me. Okay, what do we have marked? We have two sides and an angle. So again, this is either going to be side side angle, which doesn't work, or hypotenuse leg, or side angle side. Um, how about hypotenuse leg? Um, no, it's not a right triangle, so it can't be hypotenuse leg, so you can forget about that. Um, so it'll be one of these two. It'll be side angle side if the angle is between the two sides. Well, look, here's one side that's marked. Here's the other side that's marked. This is the angle between them, and that's not the angle that's marked. That means that the, uh, the angle is not between the two sides. So this is not side angle side. This is side side angle, but side side angle is not a thing. It proves nothing. So circle this, leave both of these blank. If you fill these in, you're going to lose points. All right, number 19. Um, let's mark. No, we have a given first. Um, segment BC bisects angle ABD. What does bisect mean? Bisect means cut in half. So angle ABD is being cut in half. Uh, I recommend that you trace angle ABD to make sure that we're all talking about the same thing. Okay, here is angle ABD. That is the angle that is being cut in half. That means that this side is congruent to this side. In addition to that, we're going to go ahead and mark the shared side. Okay, now focus on one triangle at a time and get ready to tell me what parts are marked. I see two sides and an angle. So either this will be side side angle, which doesn't work, or it'll be hypotenuse leg, or it'll be side angle side. Well, this is not a right triangle, so it cannot be hypotenuse leg. It'll be side angle side if the angle is between the two sides. And it is. Here's one side, here's the other side. See that they meet right here at the marked angle. That means that the angle is between those two sides. So it'll be side angle side. Now, uh, triangle ABC is congruent to triangle what, what, what? Uh, yellow angle A is congruent to white angle D. All right, yellow angle B is congruent to white angle B. And that just leaves yellow angle C and white angle C. Okay, segment BC bisects angle A. C, D. See how that's different? It's just a, a different angle is being bisected. Remember that bisect means cut in half. So A, C, D is here. A, C, D. That's the angle that's being cut in half now. So that means that this angle is congruent to this angle. Um, in addition to, to that, let's go ahead and mark the shared side.
Okay, now look at one triangle at a time. So for right now, focus on, all right, focus on that yellow triangle. Um, what do we have marked? I see two sides and an angle. Um, that means it will either be side side angle, which is not a thing, or it'll be hypotenuse leg, or it'll be side angle side. Those are the options. Um, well, hypotenuse leg is only for right triangles, and this is not a right triangle. It'll be side angle side if the angle is between the two sides. Well, here's one side that's marked. Here's the other side that's marked. They meet here at angle B. That's not the angle that we have marked. So that means that the angle is not between the two sides. All right, so that means it's not side angle side. Uh, unfortunately, side side angle is the only thing left, but um, side side angle doesn't work to prove triangles are congruent. So we have to circle this and leave the blanks blank. Let's see, um, BC bisects angle ABD. Well, where's angle ABD? Here's angle ABD right here. Uh, so that is the angle that is being bisected or cut in half. That means that this angle is congruent to this angle. In addition to that, let's go ahead and mark the shared side as being congruent. Now, focus on one triangle at a time. So if you focus on this yellow triangle for a second, what do we have marked? Uh, well, we have two angles and a side. That means that this is e either angle, angle, side, or it is angle, side, angle. Angle, side, angle is when the side is between the two angles. Well, here's an angle, here's the other angle. This is the side that's between them. And so this side that's marked is not the side that's between the two angles. Okay, that means this is not angle, side, angle. It must be angle, angle, side. Okay, triangle ABC is congruent to triangle well, A corresponds with D because they both have a single mark. Um, yellow angle B corresponds with white angle B. They both have a double mark. And then that just leaves yellow angle C and white angle C. All right, number 22. Segment BC bisects angle ACD. All right, angle ACD is right here. This is the angle that is being bisected or cut in half. That means that this half will equal this half. In addition to that, let's go ahead and mark the shared side as congruent. Now, focus your eyes on one triangle at a time. So we have the yellow triangle right now. What do we have marked on that yellow triangle? We have two angles and a side. So that means this is either angle, angle, side, or angle, side, angle. Angle, side, angle is when the side is between the two angles. Um, well, here's one angle. Here's the other angle. This is the side that's between those two angles, and that's not the side that is marked. So since the side is not between the two angles, that means this must be angle, angle, side, again. Okay, so again, this is gonna be triangle uh, DBC. Okay, that everything matches up the same way as before. Okay, number 23. Triangle PQR is congruent to triangle STU. 
use the order of the letters, not a picture, to fill in the blanks. Okay, um, so the order of the letters. So the idea is that angle P corresponds to angle S. Um, angle Q corresponds to angle T. And angle R corresponds to angle U. Okay, so angle R corresponds to angle U. Um, angle P corresponds with angle S. And angle Q is congruent to angle T. All right, now, um, what about these segments? Well, PR, that's yellow green. So that'll be SU. ST, that's yellow blue. That'll be PQ. QR, that's blue green. So that's TU. Okay, triangle RQP is congruent to triangle what, what, what? Well, they put R first and R goes with U, and then Q, Q goes with T, and then P goes with S. Okay, now we have triangle SUT, S is first. S corresponds to P, so that means um, P is gonna go first. Next is U. U corresponds with R. And last is T, which corresponds with Q. All right, now, they put R first again. R goes with U. Next, they put P. P corresponds with S. And last, they put Q. Q corresponds with T.